Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the fleet. This is Araxis of Sigma Group, and today I am starting a new video series. This video series is going to be ship reviews of all ranks or classes. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have anywhere from 10 to 15 minute video, a little bit longer depending on if it's a high tier ship and I'm going to go through all of the features of said ship that I'm reviewing including customization of ship uh, that which is looks of the ship that's the physical appearance of the ship as well as its equipment slots its station slots and potential ways to play the ship okay now because this is the first of this series of videos I thought I would start off with an iconic ship which of course will be the USS Enterprise dash, dash A technically from the original series that is indeed the Constitution class so without further ado let's have a look at the Constitution class I'm going to go on to our customization and I'm going to have everything set to constitution. Alright, so as you can see, this is the light cruiser in Star Trek Online. This is a Lieutenant Commander ship which you unlock after you complete your promotion quest to become Lieutenant Commander. And this ship is iconic because it's James T. Kirk's ship, obviously. Now, as you can see, this is this ship is based on the movie versions of the ship, not the original TV series. You can actually buy that, but I haven't got it, so I am not going to be showcasing it. Right, most ships on Star Trek Online have got three templates. Some have only got two. Some don't have any at all, depending on its ship class and type. Um, the Constitution, however, or the Light Cruiser, as I will also be calling it, has three. You have the Standard Constitution, which is this one. I'll just give you a nice showing of this. Most people will know what the Constitution looks like because of the films. For those of you who have watched the films, which I'd imagine you would have done if you were playing this game. Anyway... However, because this game is set very far in the future in comparison to when the original series was set, there is also two other variants to the light cruiser, um, which make the ship look more modern, in ter well, <laughs> modern for a futuristic game anyway. So, let's move on to see what the Excalibur looks like. And as you can see, straight away the Excalibur is a massive massive difference okay it is definitely more up-to-date it fits in with a lot of the newer ships a lot better such as things like the Sovereign class which I will most definitely get round to reviewing um, you can see how here it has a triangular section on the saucer which is again similar to the Sovereign it also has the same style in the cells as a Sovereign um, and instead of having the old small uh, deflector dish, it has a larger deflector dish, but it also has a, a much sleeker looking design. It's a curved saucer, uh, elongated saucer, more of an egg shape than the, the Constitution's r perfectly round shape. Uh, also, the impulse drives are a lot further apart and it naturally has a darker uh, good metal material look to it um, I'll be getting into materials as well as uh, advanced customization in a moment as well as interior and window types right so that was the Excalibur class so that is definitely a more modern take on the light cruiser the Vesper class is kind of a semi-hybrid between the two. Um, 
it has the round a more rounded saucer section but it is a little bit thicker than the constitution it's uh, sorry I'm struggling for words tonight it's impulse engines I'll get there eventually are again close together unlike the Excaliburs but the warp engines definitely look different to both as you can see it's a full blue nacelle, blue open nacelle design and the hull the main hull of the ship actually looks more like an old, uh, the old Excelsior class uh, with this deep cut in the back as well as the deflector dish being embedded inside rather than just the hull curving into it it actually is embedded inside okay so that is the three different variants for the light cruiser you can either go for the very old look which a lot of people do just for nostalgia's sake an ultra modern look or a hybrid between the two looks okay next of all we have interiors unless you plan on visiting your ship the interior of your ship very often i wouldn't suggest spending money on it um, you get uh, when you rank up you usually get more unlock more of these um, not necessarily them ones that deep space nine but you end up start unlocking more okay but you start off with a standard one this is like a little screenshot to show you the, these ones are all well these first four sorry are all the same just different color layouts so you've got standard a sleek a utility and the future which is what I'm using and then you go to classic which as you can see is a massively different uh, layout okay uh, could have the original constitution from the films but that cost two thousand zen and I refuse to pay that for it but you have many many different types all which do actually vary quite a lot but like I said not essential for gameplay purposes at all windows you have four different types of windows and as you can see it changes not only the windows but it also changes the escape po uh, pod areas here around the front of the saucer so you've got type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 now for all ships it will be slightly different but the majority of them follow the same kind of uh, pattern the si the look similar but are slightly different moving on materials each ship also comes with its with four materials or well you got material type 1, 2, 3, 4 and 6 uh, type 5 I am unaware of <laughs> so you have type 1 I just want to move that to there and so you have type 1 type 1 is the more classic look for most of the ships the lighter metal material uh, rather than a darker material uh, with the panelling being very light as well with a greyish uh, center hole panelling you have a type 2 which again it's very similar to type 1 but it has a lot less in the way of uh, darker details which type 1 has the panels are a lot lighter type 3 type 3 is again it's a lighter overall color it's a more whitish gray rather than a gray and the panels are a lot more in detail on this type a lot lot more in detail type 4 type 4 for all pretty much all I believe is like a really 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 dark black uh, so if you want your ship to look very very dark in color type 4 is a very good choice and then type 6 type 6 is a super white it is like really really white okay so if you want your ship to look really really white type 6 is definitely the type for you it also changes out um, the deflector dish the type of deflector dish that you're using let's say there's a rectangular deflector dish in there and that's a solid circular re uh, deflector dish and it also affects your warp nacelles slightly as well like the color of the nacelle like well for the black you can see it more obvious but then it fades a little bit for each of these different types up until the white variant which is pretty much just very very faint okay moving on to advanced as you can see here on the advanced for the light cruiser we have got 
or basically we can customize the hull, the nacelles, the neck, the pylons, the saucer, and if you're in a fleet, then fleet logo. Okay. So basically, if I want the do, 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 the saucer not to to be the constitution, I can put the constitution one on the Vesper body, as you can see there. So this is where you can really start playing along and making your ship your own. As you can see there, I have uh, there is a Zen uh, equivalent to the light cruiser, which is the light cruiser refit, which is the Exeter class. Um, that is a very nice looking ship, but I am not going to be buying it. Uh, so say if I went to the nacelles, the Exeter nacelles, they do look very nice. But then I can pick to put these nacelles on the Constitution nacelles on the Vesper pylons, or then I could go and get the Excalibur pylons if I wanted. So you can really customize out your ship that way. However, I'm not going to do that because I have my ship set up the way I want it to. So anyway, enough of customizations. Shall we get into flying and fighting with the ship? I believe we should. I will see you all in a moment. And we are back. I've just gone into a patrol mission just so that we can pick up a couple of enemies. Nice and quick and easy. Just to show you what kind of things you want to be doing with your light cruiser. As you can see, this is the light cruiser that I am currently using. Um, it is primarily constitution, but with the a with the Vesper, I believe it's the Vesper nacelles. Just because I prefer them, the look of them nacelles, a bit sleeker. But I do primarily like the look of the old constitution. Anyway. Primarily what a light cruiser is designed to do is a bit more of a tanky roll, uh, take the hits in. It isn't very fast, it is not very manoeuvrable, so the best way to play a cruiser would be to keep single phaser arrays due to their 250 degree target knock. That means even if you are sideways, you will still be able to hit the enemy. Uh, as well as p potentially using turrets which is 360 degrees but they do not do as much damage okay uh, the reason why is that the turn the turn rate and the inertia for cruisers is exceptionally high because they are usually the bigger of the ships okay they are not designed to be maneuverable they are designed to take the hits in whilst the escorts which are the smaller ships fly around like bees doing all of the dogfighting okay so you want to be keeping uh, weapons that have a large target knock so that you will always have weapons to be able to hit enemies which are usually smaller than yourself. Uh, as you can see here, th this this is just an example of how slow it turns. It's a very, very slow turning ship indeed. Okay, So the best thing to do is, you, is have your phaser arrays, but also maybe to set up for a torpedo bank or two as well just for that extra damage uh, break through the shield and right so we've got a couple of vishap ships here so we're just going to go for it okay so this is what how you would usually want to play i usually have it set up so that more power goes goes to defense um rather than anything else just means that shields don't take as much damage as quick and means I don't have to worry about healing as much so yeah as I said don't try and out maneuver these ships because you're not going to be able to these ships are just although in saying that the frigates they're not very maneuverable themselves I think they're classed as cruisers so you should be able to keep up with them in a turn fight Um I wouldn't suggest doing so I would suggest like I said just just keep flying very very slowly don't try and keep them in front of you at all times you don't need to it's not like most flying kind of games where you have to actually aim uh, it's auto fire the computer does all the aiming for you keep launching off your torpedoes whenever you can using your consoles which are down here uh, again cruisers with them not being designed primarily for fighting they are very good at it but they're not primarily designed for it in the Starfleet lore um, what you're best off doing is, well sorry not what you're best off doing but what the console layout is for cruisers is usually more 
engineering consoles than tactical or science. Uh, the higher you get, that will fluctuate slightly, but that is usually the rule of thumb with most cruisers of lower rank. Uh, this is because they are designed to be able to take hits for days, um, and engineers are the best at keeping things like your hull alive, um, debuffs which will help allow them to do less damage to shields or hull, etc. Um, you only get one tactical slot f for this ship of particular class, uh, so it is best usually to have it set up for something to do with a torpedo. Um, primarily because with you having the phaser arrays, you're not really going to be able to do much else with them. Uh, I can't load cannons or anything like that, so I can't. Uh, usually, it's either have something set up for cannons or have something set up for torpedoes, uh, especially at lower levels anywhere. Not necessarily at, hi at high levels uh, for torpedoes anywhere. Usually, energy weapons become more useful than torpedoes at higher levels just for dealing the damage an awful lot quicker. Uh, it is easier to heal a torpedo damage than it is any constant energy damage. So as you can see, I'm taking on three ships here, but I am taking the damage like exactly like what the classification of this ship would be cla called, which is a tank. Yeah, I'm trying. What I would like to do is because the turret's 360 degrees, it doesn't matter where they are, I'm still going to hit them with that. What I would like to be able to do is keep them on my side. If I keep them on my side, then I'll be able to hit them with both the fore and the aft. Uh, phaser arrays at all times. That just increases your DPS. Uh, it makes it easier to take out enemies. You don't need. Then you won't need to worry about healing as much because they will die an awful lot quicker. Uh, every now and again, I might want to try and t turn them onto my front so I can fire off a couple of torpedoes just to get them down a little bit quicker. But it isn't essential. Uh, if I use Alpha, it will help my turn rate a little bit better. That is an ability that I have got which is uh, attack, pattern, attack Pattern Alpha. There we go, I can get two torpedoes off and there's that one gone because its shields were down so the torpedo hit directly. And again, as you can see, I was firing with both my phaser arrays there because he was on my side. So this is basically what you get to do with your cruisers. You basically keep them on the side and fight all, like an old boat would do in the sea you would fight side by side being able to fire cannons out the side um, and that's basically what they keep to with the cruiser whilst you constantly take all the hits without too much damage to yourself you can see I've had to do very 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 little healing uh, if any to be perfectly honest I've done a little bit of healing just out of habit where I didn't really need to uh, my shields are not going down with this Vishap frigate they, they just can't do the damage to you whereas I'm annihilating their shields constantly because I'm keeping it on my side so I can hit it with all three weapons instead of just the two right and once the condition red alert goes away I can activate full impulse which is boosted speed but lower turn rate but it just means I get to the enemy a little bit quicker for you I wish that would go away, there we go right so this is going to be the last three no it's not, I've got five enemy forces to eliminate probably not going to do that in this video it's going to take far too long you get you do get the idea of what this cruiser is capable of it's very good at it's sucking up the hits it's very good at just dealing out the damage if you keep the ship enemy ships on the side um, like I said keep it to single phaser bank arrays because you will not be able to keep them in front of you all the time for a dual phaser bank which has only got a 90 degree target in our arc which does make it a little bit difficult at times to keep them in in view but other than that, that's pretty much it for the light cruiser. It's a very, very good ship to use at low rank. Very versatile. It's good at fighting. It's good at defense. Uh, the only thing that it lets itself down with is maneuverability. It is not very maneuverable, in, especially in comparison to the lower rank science vessel and the lower rank uh, escort vessel, which do have more maneuverability, uh, but are key focused in different areas. So once I take out these two last two ships, I think I'm going to call this review quits. 
because it is actually quite a long review but this is what I wanted to do for you guys of the fleet and for anyone else watching is make reviews on these ships in such a, in such detail as it actually be useful for you gives you some ideas of how to play uh, these particular ships uh, gives you some ideas of uh, different customization options for these ships uh, for appearance as well as uh, just a general overlook of the ships just for help in consideration if you've never used the ship before and you are thinking of using it in the future there we go with the torpedo there goes that one I'm going to use Alpha again just to slightly make it easier uh, for us to turn and outflank the enemy and once I get them in front of me my torpedoes will go off and there goes that last ship so as you can see very little no damage done to me whatsoever and lots of damage done to them anyway guys this has been Araxus your fleet admiral of Sigma Task Group thank you very much for watching and another review will be on its way shortly I hope you enjoyed it if you have any suggestions on which ship to do next before the announcement of a new video please feel free send me a mail in game or if I'm online fleet message or anything of the sort like that or email me on the contact us via our website again thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys all in game soon goodbye